Today I'm going to show you how to set up Microsoft Teams live events. And by the way, it's awesome. Okay, so I'll show you how to set it up and also a couple of tips and tricks on how to get this to work well. So first things first is if you don't see schedule live event in your Teams, then it might be a setting that's not switched on your tenant. So you might not have the rights to do it, but I'm going to show you how that's set up anyway so that you can ask someone else to help you with it. So in your um, office.com, if you go to the admin center, that's if you have the rights, and you go to the Teams admin center, you'll see um, that there's under meetings, there's live events policies. And under the policy that's set up by data uh, fault for the org wide. So uh, under the global um, policy, you'll see that there's a setting there that says who can join scheduled events and it's set to everyone and who can record event um, or or whatever, if it's always, never, or only an organizer can record an event. So um, this is quite important because if it's not set up to um, everyone can join scheduled events, then it possibly means that you can't schedule public um, live events. So let's get started. Um, so that's set up. Um, if I then go to Teams, I can then schedule a new live event right here in my calendar and Teams. I'm going to go schedule new live event. I'm going to say that this is a, um, let's say it's a, I don't know, training webinar, etc. And I'm going to set it for today. Uh, I'm going to just back date it so that I can start the event already. Or no, actually, let's set this for one o'clock. Then um, you'll see that I'm the producer. I can also add other producers or um, presenters. So what I've done in the past is that I added Brahm as a producer and then I make myself a presenter. But I've kind of gotten comfortable with actually being the producer and the presenter at the same time. So you might have two, you might have someone organizing for you. It just makes it easier. Um, but if you're ADHD like me, then it's quite easy to do it on your own. So if you go next, you'll see that you can set it up for specific people or for um, in your company or for public, which is what I'm using for my webinars. And if you scroll down, I don't make the recording available to attendees. I actually record and um, share it afterwards through YouTube. But there's the attendee management report and there's the Q&A you have to switch on, by the way. I'm going to then schedule it and um, it then gives me a link that I can supply to people. So remember that this isn't a calendar invite to them. It's the link to join the event. So they have to schedule their own calendar invites. I'm not going to remind them. I'm not going to spam them and I'm not going to ask them to register for the event. Um, I'm going to supply them with that link. So you can, if it's internal, set up a um, meeting and add the link to it. Or you can publish this on Yammer or uh, on a... Oh, yay, I have someone else who joined my YouTube channel. Um, so that is the link that you can supply to them. So there's the link that you would get um, for the people who attend. So now um, this means I can then have the event. So I've scheduled the event. So it's 10 to 1 at the moment. But let's say the event is scheduled for 1 o'clock. So what I shared yesterday on YouTube is a little um, lobby that you can do and um, that you join beforehand. So I'm going to join this event now. And we can recommend that you use your mic. I'm going to switch it off for now. And I can switch on my camera. Let's see if it works because I'm busy recording. There we go. My self-painted background, not a custom background in Teams. And I'm going to join. And then uh, let's give it a moment. Oh. There we go. So as a producer slash organizer, this is the view that you can see. If you're a presenter, um, you don't see it um, like this, but I'm, at the moment I'm both. And then in the bottom corner, you'll see that there's a sharing button. So what I do is that beforehand, I already share um, the screen that I want to share. So where's my presentation? Let's say it's... There we go. And I just want to go back to Teams. So there is my presentation and there's my video as well. So what I do is that the first slide I share full screen, um, just the content. Okay, so I double click and I send this live. This is that cool little GIF thing that I showed yesterday in my YouTube video. And then I immediately schedule the same presentation because I actually just use the same one. I go to the next slide. And then the nice thing is I've got my video open so I can add my video here. So this slide with my little cool little GIF, how cute is that? 
that slide will be showing there for um, the attendees and of course the gift will work when I'm not busy recording and then the next slide that I'm going to set up is the one with my video so I normally do my webinars like this so that they can see my um, crazy face as well because I use a lot of hands and things and fighting in my webinars and then what I do is I actually already start the webinar early so I started early so that it shows this little login screen or lobby screen I can then also use um, the Q&A so this is pretty nifty um, so I can make an announcement and I can say hey all oops spelling is important hey all um, live event will start in 15 minutes because then there's movement which is cool and then you can do it again in five minutes and say it's going to start in 10 or it's start in five and whatever and the nice thing is you can use that lobby screen um, to actually um, share important things um, someone gave me a tip on Twitter yesterday I can't remember what it was now um, that said that they do a little video and it actually helps with sound because it helps people to quickly check their audio and stuff as well so hey guys there's a little sound clip playing why don't you just ch check your audio um, then this is where we can find recording afterwards this is where you can find information about my webinars please use the Q&A blah 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 there is a 10 second delay so don't uh, worry if I don't immediately answer or something so you can absolutely use um, this as an announcement and then you'll see that there is new and published so people can actually uh, post a question I can check it first and then publish it so that other people can see it so if people ask dodgy or stupid questions not that there is such a thing of course or someone gets fresh with you so you can also dismiss questions but that's where you can actually publish it and then other people can see the questions as well then of course um, I've set it it is going to record but it doesn't auto share my recording with attendees but um, afterwards I can then after I've stopped the event so I'm going to just stop this now I'm not even going to start the event so I'm going to just can this um, leave then afterwards you can find the recording in the admin center so if I go back to my admin center and um, also in the teams admin center you'll see there's analytics and reports I'm going to go to the reports I'm going to say that I want to see teams live event usage maybe for the last seven days I can even search for a specific user and big companies of course that will make sense so this is the one that I recently had on the 14th there's the recording that I can download there's the attendee engagement report there's the Q&A report as well which is pretty cool then live events here's a couple of things that I think you need to know um, these are the licenses that are on live, live events E1, E3, E5, A3 and A5 that's education of course you need to have a Teams license and a Stream license then um, blah 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 Core capabilities. This is very important. Um, maximum number of concurrent events currently is 15. I know that they're pushing out new ones. And then also maximum 10,000. I think this is being increased to 20,000. And I think the four hours is being increased as well. I'm saying think because I just don't remember everything offhand. But I've seen that there was a post um, that said that that's being increased as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, how many presenters can you have at a time? Let's quickly check. Uh, number of presenters 10. That's pretty cool. So you can actually um, stage the presenters um, and set them up for the next slide. Then you have organizers, producers, presenters, attendees, of course. At the moment, I was organizer and presenter. The tricky thing, people, um, you have to have the desktop app. Um, if you're a producer or presenter, you can't use the web app for it. You can't be two people at one. It's on one computer. That didn't work for me the other day when I tested that. So I had to log in onto another machine, but um, attendees can use web, mobile or desktop. There's the event live usage. Um, that's just the settings that I wanted you to apply. And then just the last thing that I wanted to mention. So this is a, if I'm an organizer, I can then see the screens that someone shared with me and I can move them across. This uh, moving across to send live is nice because you can stage the next screen. So if you have multiple presenters, while this person's presenting, you can then set up the next presenter as well. But I've definitely used it um, to be able to um, swap the view that I have of my screen, which is the video as well as the, um, the content, of course. Then let's quickly see. That's what it will look like. Move it across. You can start the event. Um, it'll ask you, are you sure? Um, there's the Q&A. Pretty cool. 
and that's where you can end the event of course so i do think that you're absolutely going to love um, the live events it's worked really really well for me i'm doing quite a lot of uh, webinars at the moment i'll share um, let me quickly see where's my blog so here's the last thing if you're interested in attending any of my webinars if you go to my blog tracyfunofscafe.com you'll see that i've brought in a tab called microsoft 365 webinars and on this tab I've got a table with the next webinars coming up, so I'll keep on adding webinars there. And then the previous webinars that I've hosted, you'll see that there's the link. That was the link to join the webinar, of course. But then afterwards, I'll add the link to the video on YouTube, as well as the link to the slides on SlideShare, if there was slides, okay? So this is one stop shop where you can go to to see what new webinars do I have, where's the video of the previous one, or where's the slides if you wanted to, and it then also gives um the time for the webinars in different uh, time zones. So I've got another one coming up on the 21st, and that's going to be very focused on co-authoring in OneDrive, so it should be um, cool for everyone. So there we go, Teams Live events. Love it. I hope you're going to have fun. Um, give me feedback, and take, uh, take care. Chat soon.